Good morning. Uh, before we begin worship today, I want to make you aware of a couple events upcoming and invite your participation. The first is today, uh, Sunday, and a, a graduation parade for four of our graduates. They'll be at church with their families in, in designated stations, and you're invited to come to the church and drive through the parking lot and, and uh, honor them and celebrate with them. That'll be this Sunday again today from 11 until 12 in the morning. And again, it'll be in the church parking lot and with four of our, our graduates. So hope you can be a part of that. The second event is our semi-annual congregational meeting that will be coming up the end of June on the 28th, a Sunday at 10.30 a.m. So again, Sunday, June 28th, 10.30 a.m. This will be a Zoom meeting, which will be exciting for us and a little bit different. Um, so you will receive an, e an email invitation inviting you to this meeting and, and with a link on it to join the meeting. There will be another email that comes earlier to that, prior to the meeting, and there will be a link on that, that first email to SurveyMonkey, which will be where you can find the ballot to vote for open board positions. Uh, the purpose of, of this annual meeting is to elect new officers to our board. If you are uncomfortable or unable to do email, or Survey Monkey or Zoom, you're invited to contact the church office to make arrangements for a paper ballot. Oh, I should say that um, Survey Monkey, you'll be in, you'll be required to and invited to cast your ballots between the 22nd and the 25th. So at the Zoom meeting, we will announce um, the results of the election of those board members. Let's see. Also, on SurveyMonkey, each email account is only a, allowed one vote. So if, if an email is for the whole household, then um, both spouses cannot vote. So if you want to both of you be able to vote, again, contact the church office and give us both your emails if you have separate accounts, and then, then you'll both be able to vote. I guess bottom line, there's a lot there. If you have any questions, Call us in the office and we can try to explain it more fully. Thank you and, and uh, God bless you as we now join together in worship. Welcome to worship today. As we did last week on Pentecost, um, we have a candle that helps us to remember and represents the Holy Spirit present with us and among us. And so I invite you to do the same at home as we worship together. Today is Holy Trinity Sunday, and so we, we proclaim and we worship the triune God, God the, the Creator, God the Redeemer in Jesus Christ, and God the Holy Spirit, who again we believe is within us uh, as people of God and as this community gathered in Jesus' name. Again, Holy Trinity Sunday, and, and we, we worship our triune God in the midst of much upheaval and unrest, first from a pandemic and now from um, violence and protests following that violence. And it is good that we worship God in the midst of this because we find salvation, we find redemption, we find restoration and renewal in God. And so we, we call on God in the midst of all that's going around and are going on in our world today. We pray for God to intervene. We pray for God to be with us through this and to show us the way to a better world and to be better people. So God bless you as we worship together today. We begin our worship today with a lament for the church, confessing racism. And this Lament was first used and developed for a commemoration of the Emanuel Nine in June of 2015, and unfortunately is still appropriate to be used today. As church, we confess the sin of racism and condemn 
racist rhetoric and the ideology of white supremacy. God have mercy. As church, we confess, repent, and repudiate the times when this church has been silent in the face of racial injustice. God have mercy. Racism is deeply ingrained within the ELCA, a predominantly white church. It is deeply embedded within the individual congregations whose members continue to foster stereotypes and support policies that actively hurt people of color. God have mercy. As church, we declare that the enslavement of black bodies and the removal of indigenous peoples establish racism in the United States, a truth this nation and this church have yet to fully embrace. God have mercy. Rooted in slavery, racism is manifested through the history of Jim Crow policies, racial segregation, the terror of lynching, extrajudicial killings by law enforcement, and the disproportionate incarceration of people of color. God have mercy. As church, we lament the institutional racism of discriminatory treatments within the call process, inequitable compensation of clergy of color, racial segregation, divestment from black communities and congregation, systemic policies and organizational practices, and a failure to fully include the gifts of leadership and worship styles of black people, indigenous people, and people of color. God have mercy. Confessions are empty promises without meaningful actions, actions that are grounded in prayer, education, and soul-searching repentance. The sin of racism is, separates us from one another. Though we trust that we are reconciled to God through Christ's death and resurrection, we seek such life-giving reconciliation with one another. As we repent, let us not turn back to ideologies that promote white supremacy. We trust that God can make all things new. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We pray the prayer of the day. God of heaven and earth, 
before the foundation of the universe and the beginning of time, you are the triune God, author of creation, eternal word of salvation, life-giving spirit of wisdom. Guide us, all, guide us to all truth by your spirit, that we may proclaim all that Christ has revealed and rejoice in the glory he shares with us. Glory and praise to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The first lesson today is from Genesis chapter 1 and chapter 2, the first four verses. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let there be a vault between the waters to separate water from water. So God made the vault and separated the water under the vault from the water above the vault. And it was so. God called the vault sky. And there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the water under the sky be gathered to one place and let it dry and let dry ground appear. And it was so. God called the dry ground land and the gathered waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the land produce vegetation, seed bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it according to their various kinds, and it was so. The land produced vegetation, plants bearing seed according to their kinds, and trees bearing fruit with seed in it according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening and there was morning, the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the vault of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them serve as signs to mark sacred times and days and years. And let them be lights in the vault of the sky to give the light on the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the night and to separate light with darkness. He gave light. God gave them in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate light from darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the waters teem with living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the vault of the sky. So God created the great creatures of the sea and every living thing with which the water teems and that moves about in it according to their kinds and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them and said, be fruitful and increase in number and fill the water in the seas and let the birds increase on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds, the livestock, the creatures that move along the ground, and the wild animals, each according to its kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals according to their kinds, the livestock according to their kinds, and all the creatures that move along the ground according to their kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, 
over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds in the sky and all the creatures that move along the ground, everything that has breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. And the psalm for today, Psalm 8. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet, all flocks and herds, and the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea, all that swims in the path of the sea. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth.
The second lesson is from 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 11 through 13. Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice, strive for full restoration, encourage one another, be of one mind, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All God's people here send their greetings. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hi there, you guys. I really miss being with you. I don't like doing this this way, but this way is better than nothing. Um, have, have you ever read a story or uh, seen a movie about somebody who put a message in a bottle or a jar and then threw it into the ocean? Uh, I think I did it when I was a kid a long, long time ago, or maybe maybe not even when I was a kid. And maybe you've done it too. But well, guess what? I've heard a story recently about a man who had three jars. He was on a, a cruise ship in the Caribbean. And the Caribbean is like right here. Here we are in Washington, okay? And the Caribbean, if you go all the way down here, south of Florida and south of Cuba, around here, or south of Florida anyway, right here is the Caribbean. There's the Caribbean Sea, and there's all these islands, and people like to go on cruise ships. And... Anyway, he was on this cruise ship, and he had three jars, and he wrote messages in it, and he wrote his name, an address and a dollar bill. He included a dollar bill for the postage. And he threw the bottles into the ocean. And his friends made fun of him. They said, nobody's going to find this. Nobody's going to get back to you. Uh, but guess what? Two people out of the three, um, two of the bottles were found by people and they wrote back to this man and that was pretty awesome. And his friends thought, oh, I guess maybe you were right. Well, I was thinking maybe we should do the same thing and we could write, uh, get a bottle or um, a jar and write a message from um, maybe something from the Bible or say, God loves you or love your neighbor. We could put some kind of message from Jesus in this seal it up, and throw it in the ocean. But then I thought, no, we shouldn't do that. Because in the first place, how many people is this going to reach? If it reaches anybody, maybe one person. And then, wow, what if a whale swallows it or something? I don't want to hurt a whale. Or then I really thought, I thought, wow, think of all the trash that's in the ocean. I don't want Jesus message, a message from God, from me, to uh, end up as trash in the ocean, because we already have too much trash already in the ocean. So, but then I thought about it. Jesus told his disciples, and we are all disciples of Jesus, okay? As people who believe in Jesus, we are all disciples. Jesus told his disciples how he wanted it done. He said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So like I said, we are Jesus' disciples, and he wants us to tell others about his love for them uh, and share with them what he has taught us in the Bible and in Sunday school and stuff. But that doesn't mean you should go up to people and say, you need to believe in Jesus. Because I don't know about you, but I don't like it when people tell me what to do. You know, um, you know, and words are powerful, but actions are powerful too. And let's show people what Jesus is all about. And Jesus is all about love. So maybe if we are just kind to each other, that's a start. And uh, maybe, I don't know, I kind of remember back in school, and I wanted to be friends with people who were kind to me. 
So maybe being kind to other people, you could make new friends when we do go back to school. Um, and sometimes you could probably ask some a friend to come to church with you. That's a great way. We need more kids at church. Um, just being kind to people. Think about how good you feel when people are nice to you. I, I, th I think that's the way to go. So however you can be kind to someone, however you can show God's love from inside of you is a great way to go. Um, I think that's the good way. Now on a personal note, I just want to say how proud I am of Marin, Nathan, Blake, and Julia for graduating, for graduating from high school. I think it's a really rotten deal that you guys can't participate to participate in your graduation ceremony. Uh, but I just know that everybody from Pilgrim is proud of you. And I know I'm proud of you. I had the honor of um, teaching most of you in Sunday school, and I had all of you in confirmation. And you guys are excellent examples of what good disciples are. So let us say a prayer real quick. Dear God, help us to be good disciples by spreading your word and love. Amen. Bye. Hope to see you soon. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, a lot has changed since last Trinity Sunday. Not just the COVID-19 pandemic under which we live, but also the killing of George Floyd, an unarmed, handcuffed black man by a white police officer in Minneapolis. Just a few weeks ago, we learned, many of us, of the, the shooting of Ahmaud Aubrey. But since that time, Breonna Taylor, Dejan Sean Reed, Tony McDade, have also been killed. And how many others whose names are known only to their families and to God? Today is Trinity Sunday. It's a hard, it's a hard holiday for us to wrap our minds around. It's a difficult, a difficult concept. But we learn about the Trinity, particularly in today's First lesson from Genesis. In this beautiful song of creation, we hear in the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep. And a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. And God said, and creation began. Martin Luther put it this way. So also the Christian church agrees that in this description, there is indicated the mystery of the Holy Trinity. Father created through the Son whom Moses called Word, and over this creative work rooted the Holy Spirit. Later God says, let us make humankind in our image. This is the glorious relationship with God that spills out into all creation. God is not a lone ranger. And all of God shows up, all of God shows up, delighting in creation, caring for creation, weeping for creation, redeeming creation. I confess that I do not fully understand or even have language to describe the mystery of the Trinity. Probably won't until I finish my baptismal vocation and stand in the presence of God. I can't explain how. But I can testify to the great Lutheran question, what does this mean? God is relationship. 
within God and flowing from God. Creation is, not, is God's decision not to look after God's self, but focuses God's energies on creation. This trinity, this God, this relationship is outward and overflowing. God is the one who does not grasp. As we hear in Philippians, let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as a thing to be grasped. Likewise, the spirit is poured out on us all. Again, what does this mean? God is relationship within God, with the creation, with humankind, and among humankind. And since we are baptized into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, baptized into the Trinity, we are also part of this powerful, dynamic, living, giving, loving relationship with God, in God, with creation, with each other. We are inextricably woven together. No one is alone. No one is beyond the fierce, tender love of God. And God is not far off. God is present in creation, in each of us and in all of us. God is flesh and blood made visible in Jesus of Nazareth and in every human being. God is spirit closer than our own breath. And this is how God as Trinity shows up today. God is creator. God created diversity, beautiful, vital, alive. We must reject calls for colorblindness. That diminishes and washes out God's gift of diversity. We in the white majority can begin to see our siblings of color more clearly. We should be color amazed, recognizing the strength that comes with all our many colors. And God as creator made all of us in God's image. Let us make them in our image. That means all of us are a part of this relational triune God who did create all of humankind, each and every one and all of us together in God's image, all. And God is the word made flesh, our flesh, your flesh, my flesh, George Floyd's flesh. Jesus in his passion still suffers with those who suffer. The crucifixion of an unarmed handcuffed man lying face down on the street is the crucifixion and the passion of our Lord. The crucifixion of so many, too many, black and brown people who live constantly with the violence of racism is the passion of our Lord. And God is spirit. The wind, the breath that moved over the face of the deep at creation, the breath of God that was breathed into the first earth creature, Adam. The breath of Jesus as he gave them the gift of the spirit. The breath crushed out of George Floyd. The breath of life God had given to him. And now church, we as the baptized, those of us baptized into the Trinity, show up. We work for an end to violence the violence of racism that kills bodies and maims souls. And we work for the end of violence brought about by lawlessness and also frustration, masquerading in some cases as protest. In the fierce love of the Trinity, we do not deny anger. In the face of the reality and equity, and equity of racial injustice, Anger is appropriate, is appropriate. But we use our anger to bring about change. We put out fires set to stores, workplaces, churches, and property. But we ask the, spy, the spirit kindle in us 
the fire of justice. We work for calm and quiet throughout our country, but we remain disquieted as we search deep within ourselves. We work for peace, but not the passive peace that allows the mechanisms of racism and white supremacy to stay in place. No, the peace God alone can give that gives us the strength and courage to act. The Trinity is a relationship within God, with creation, with us, and among us. Until the white majority feels in our soul that the pain and suffering of black and brown people is our own pain and suffering, it will not be safe to be black or brown in America. And until we feel in our own soul that this is our pain and our story, we are not open to the relationship that God wants to shower, share, lavish upon us as a relational God, a loving God, as a God of the Trinity, as a God who has brought us into that relationship and commands us to share that relationship and live that relationship with creation and with each other. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians ends, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. It's actually a promise and I think marching orders for us. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is with us. The love of God is with us. The communion of the Holy Spirit is with us. And together in the communion and community of the Holy Trinity, we can make that a reality. Amen. give thanks for God's word we have heard today. Let us pray. O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Today on this Holy Trinity Sunday, we confess the faith of the church together through the words of the Nicene Creed. So please join me. We believe in one God, 
the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for us, for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and of the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now our worship continues with the prayers of the church. Gathered into the mystery of the Trinity, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of God's creation. God of community, you form us as your church. Guide our bishops, pastors, and deacons as they lead the church in these trying times. With all the baptized, may they be strengthened to share the good news of Jesus Christ. And in prayer and action, strive for peace and justice in all the earth. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. God of creation, you called everything into being. Sustain this world with your renewing care. Instill in us a deeper wonder for the created world you've called good, and a greater humility for our place within it. Kindle in us a creative and resilient spirit as we care for the earth and its creatures. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. God of counsel, all authority belongs to you. Encourage leaders to seek wisdom and respond with courage and compassion to those most in need. We pray for community leaders in this time of unrest, the mayors of our cities, including Julie Dorr of Puyallup, governors of states, including Governor Inslee and President Trump. Further the work of advocates who pursue justice in often ignored communities like Chief Seattle, whom we com com commemorate today. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of presence, you walk with us through all the twists and turns of life, including the important milestones in our lives. Lord, we thank you for our graduates. Marin Wilson, Julia Melkert, Blake Rohrbach, Nathan Waterstrat, Bethany Olson, Michaela Hurt, Annika Apple, Madison Young, Aaliyah Johnson, and Luke Erickson. You have enriched in every way with all kinds of speech and knowledge. Empower them with the spiritual gifts you give each one for service in your kingdom. Keep them faithful just as you are faithful. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy, mercy is great. great. God of care, you created us in your image. We are your beloved children. May we recognize your likeness in one another. We pray for all mourning the death of your beloved child, George Floyd. Hold in your loving embrace all experiencing trauma, fear, uncertainty, and loss. Protect vulnerable children and adults from violence or neglect. Provide what is needed for those lacking access to food, shelter, and other services. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. God of healing, 
You accompany us in sickness and suffering. Bring relief to all those afflicted with the coronavirus and all those isolated now more than ever, especially those in prison or care facilities. Strengthen caregivers, health workers, and all whose work ensures the safety and well-being of others. Console, heal, and nourish all in need this day, including Craig Johnson, brother of Ian Johnson, for continued healing from COVID-19, Darlene, Penny Davison's sister, for healing and comfort in her continuing fight with pancreatic cancer and strength for her family. Randy for complete healing following surgery on his Achilles tendon. Paul, cousin of Robin Rideout and Lori Lush, diagnosed with T-cell lymphoma, for wisdom for his doctors and treatment and for peace for him and his family. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. God of connection, you call us to make your presence known. Accompany people of faith as they nurture relationships in new ways, where the sin of racism fractures our relationships, bring repentance and reconciliation. Free us for the difficult work ahead in our congregations and communities. Open our hearts for attentive listening so that our places of connection are filled with your spirit. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. Lastly, save us, O oh God, from ourselves, from racism often cloaked in pious words, from the machinations of white supremacy hidden in calls for civility, from microaggressions thinly veiled in arrogance, from apologies when they don't give way to action from forgiveness without facing the truth, from reconciliation without reparation. Deliver us, O oh God, from expecting siblings of color to continue to bear this emotional work, which is not theirs to do. Grateful for the long arc that bends toward justice, we pray, grant us wisdom, Give us courage for the facing of these days by the power of the Spirit, all for the sake of the kingdom that we share in Jesus Christ. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Graduates, I'm sure this, this year has not turned out the way you were expecting when you started it. And yet you've reached this, this milestone, this time of celebration. And as you do that, uh, the world is in upheaval. You probably didn't see that coming either. Pandemic and, and now protests and, and reactions to violence. Our world is changing before our eyes. And yet at the same time, you are baptized. And you are claimed and reminded that despite the world and all that is going on, that you are a child of God, that God loves you, and that promise never changes and never leaves you. So you can hold on to that. Just like God's people are marked by sacred time and sacred space and sacred moments, you are set apart for the glory of God. So today, we mark your sacred, sacred moment of graduation, and we rejoice and we celebrate with you. Graduates, when your parents and guardians presented you for holy baptism, they made promises to raise you in the midst of God's faithful people, the body of Christ. They promised to tell you over and over again God's story of salvation so that our sacraments, prayers, creeds, and commandments would be written on your heart in the hope that you would learn to trust God, proclaim Christ to the world through your words and actions, care for others and the whole world, and work towards justice and peace for all people. We now have a message from Mrs. Mike Schmidt about your prayer shawls. The prayer shawl ministry at Pilgrim was started many years ago by our then parish nurse, Nancy Hoy. We have a group of women, about 13 now, who meet regularly 
and pray over the shawls as they knit them or crochet them. They're given to people who are ill, who are dying, who are grieving, who have any other needs or emotions where a prayer shawl might help. And this year, again, we're very happy to be able to give prayer shawls to our graduating high school seniors. Along with a prayer shawl will come this little prayer or remembrance. This shawl was made with love and prayers. When you use it or look at it, remember your pilgrim family loves you and God loves you. Wherever you go, whatever you do, remember that God is there to comfort and sustain you. We hope that you will enjoy and use these and remember this. Thank you. In Ecclesiastes 3, we are reminded that, that there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. As you close this chapter, it may not have been the ending you were hoping for and expecting, but there is another chapter starting nevertheless. And as you move on to the next chapter of your life, of each unique journey that you are on, there will be more times and more seasons that you have not encountered before, that you were not expecting. Take your shawl during these times and wrap it around you. When you encounter a new time in life, remember that you have a community that is walking with you, that is praying for you. And just like this shawl that, that you now have will be a warm haven that will always be here with open arms for you. And now we pray together. We thank you, Lord, for these young people whom you have nurtured and equipped for service in your world. Guide them into further growth in knowledge and truth. Give them an abundance of joyful discovery and meaningful service. Protect them in all ways, physically, morally, and spiritually. In your mercy, keep them close in relationship with you and bring them to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Fulfilling the promise of the resurrection, pour out the fire of your spirit, uniting in one body, people of every nation and tongue, and so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, we praise your name. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of all power and love, we give thanks for your unfailing presence and the hope you provide in times of uncertainty and loss. Send your Holy Spirit to kindle in us your holy fire. Revive us to live as Christ's body in the world, a people who pray, worship, learn, break bread, share life, heal neighbors, 
bear good news, seek justice, rest and grow in the Spirit. Wherever and however we gather, unite us in common prayer and send us in common mission, that we and the whole creation might, might be restored and renewed through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Holy Three, the Holy One, increase your hope, strengthen your faith, deepen your love, and grant you peace. Amen. to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. <laughs> 